who's full of it. Evolution Schmevolution, a special week-long daily show investigation coming up next on Comedy Central. The question will be answered. No more monkeying around. And birthplace of biodiversity, a daily show special report. Evolution Schmevolution. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is John Stewart. Delightful to be here. Welcome to the Daily Show. Well, thank you very much. Very kind of you. No question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of a special week of shows focused on one of the nation's most controversial and polarizing issues, evolution or schmevolution. <laughs> Charles Darwin's groundbreaking theory of evolution is widely accepted by nearly all scientists. Yet next week, parents in Dover, Pennsylvania will go to court over the Board of Education's insistence that a theory known as intelligent design be taught along with evolution in science class. Science class, or as it's known in Dover, the crazy claim magic fun hour. <laughs> the president has weighed in on the issue, coming out in support of teaching intelligent design alongside evolution. In his words, quote, I think that part of education is to expose people to different schools of thought. Because there's one thing this president is known for, it's passion for lively intellectual debate. <laughs> so join us on a four-day exploration of this explosive issue, evolution, schmevolution, where we try to find out, are we characters in a dubious fairy tale written thousands of years ago in the depths of human ignorance, or random globs of cells who got a little luckier than the that grows on our shower tiles? <laughs> Why are we here? And how did we get here? Not here, necessarily, but here. <laughs> For most of human history, the answer took the form of what were called creation myths, traditional stories explaining our origins. They tended to follow a basic template. Typically, a deity, either animalistic, anthropomorphic, or bearded, engages in some kind of mystical, wondrous process <laughs> that eventually produces the misshapen progenitors of the human race and thus becomes man. <laughs> These myths comforted man by allowing him to laugh at other cultures' creation myths. <laughs> For instance, the Aztecs say we were dug out of the earth by a giant pig. <laughs> Everyone knows we sprouted from the heavenly ear of corn. <laughs> we really should kill them. <laughs> but the rise of Christianity brought a new creation story to the fore. In six days, Man was formed from a lump of clay, and woman sprung forth from man's rib. It just made sense. <laughs> and for the better part of two millennia, Christianity reigned supreme, dominating Western civilization and inspiring masterpieces such as the Sistine Chapel, Handel's Messiah, and the work of Striper. In 1859, a British naturalist named Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, putting forth a revolutionary idea that man evolved into his current form through incremental changes over millions of years, a process that continues to this day and continues. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh. Embrace the future. Darwin's theory came after years of meticulous observations, many of them recorded on the Galapagos Islands, where he noticed that finches, whose beaks seemed clearly adapted to specific tasks, were there, like eating seeds, foraging insects, opening bottles of wine. <laughs> but Darwin surmised that these finches must share a common ancestor, because while their beaks varied, they all tasted like finch. <laughs> Evolicious. Darwin identified the force driving those variations as natural selection. Uh, if through mutation an animal developed a new and helpful trait, it would more likely to reproduce that trait and pass it on. A uh, classic example, the giraffe. Given the height of the trees in the African savanna, guess which of these giraffe mutations is best suited to survive? The answer, of course, C, although D would have been awesome. Darwin's theory... Ah! Ah! Darwin 
Darwin's theory was controversial because it meant mankind was not special amongst the beasts, which seems wrong. Animals are driven by base instinct, unable to control primitive desires for food, mating, <laughs> and battle. Whereas humans, well, uh... Oh, oh, okay, all right. We can gamble. I'd like to see animals do that. Well, anyway, the stage was now set for an epic debate between the forces of science on one side and religion on the other. One side says, you're backwards and primitive. The other side says, you're godless and love Satan. Sadly, the debate itself has not evolved in over 150 years. Until this week. As part of our... We will solve the debate this week, and as part of our Evolution Schmevolution Week, our own Ed Helms will be traveling the country, visiting the great battlegrounds of the Evolutionary War. Ed joins us now. Ed, thanks for joining us. Ed, where, where, tell us, where are you today? John, I'm standing in front of the Ray County Courthouse in Dayton, Tennessee. This was the site of the infamous 1925 Scopes Monkey Trial, where John Scopes was convicted of teaching evolution to high school students. That trial gave Dayton a reputation for close-minded ignorance. But as I found out, the town took that black eye and made lemonade. Just as colonial Williamsburg faithfully recreates life in 17th century Virginia, Dayton has become a living history museum of 1920s Tennessee. And it's quite a magnet for tourists. Everywhere you look are monkey trial commemorations, exquisite artwork, and lively exhibits. And just like Colonial Williamsburg, the town is populated with costumed performers who reenact the quaint attitudes of the good old days. What is your take on the Scopes trial? Evolution is a total fabrication and a lie. Uh, evolution distorts faith, destroys faith, and builds an economic market that is contrary to our American way of life. That's good stuff. In addition to the skilled actors, Dayton's attention to detail is staggering. The town has gone so far as to erect this elaborate set of a fully functioning college. Named after William Jennings Bryan, the prosecutor in the Scopes trial, the college keeps things authentic. Store owner Tim Kruver, whose daughter plays one of the college students, explains. What does their science department teach regarding evolution versus creationism? Well, you, it's a fact that they're going to be teaching creationism up there because they don't believe in evolution. When the tourists aren't, you know, milling around watching the classes and stuff, then what do they teach? Well, the same thing. In Colonial Williamsburg, you can learn Negro spirituals. In Dayton, you can take part in an old-timey sing-along, ridiculing evolution. Listen to the Mockingbird, nicest song you ever heard. When Scopes was convicted, how did you feel? Uh, I was elated, I suppose you could say. I would be elated. I'm still elated. We whipped them good. And we'll whip them again. Who else are you going to whip? We never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know who's going to get a whipping. What about sodomites? Oh, they're going to get a big whipping. <laughs> whipping. <laughs> whipping. So come on down and enjoy Dayton, safe in the knowledge that it's all pretend. Because if it were real, it would be f***ing terrifying. Thank you for that report, Ed. Uh, let me ask you, so that's the first one. Tomorrow, uh, the series continues. What's your next stop? John, tomorrow I'll be at the Brock Zoo, where an evolutionary biologist will try to convince me, Ed Helms, that we descended from, get this, monkeys. <laughs> oh, he's going to get a whippet. John. Thank you so much, Ed Helms. We'll be right back.
Drew, you're very good. You're very good. Do you have a, a background in acting? No, I despise actors. Really? Yes. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Ver with the airplanes. Perfect. When I was younger, I used to play Army. Here we go. 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 Here we go.